See this strawberry? Well, around three quarters of America's strawberries come from California, and the vast majority of those end up getting sent to other states. That means they get put in the back of a truck and driven along the highway to places like, say, Washington, D.C. Now, that's a long trip, and it involves 40 hours of driving for a trucker. The thing about strawberries is that they spoil quickly. That's why it's crucial to keep the shipping time as short as possible. If you can do that, you'll add days of shelf life. Let's go back to the truck. That trip from California to DC translates to four full days of driving for the trucker. Now that's because truckers are required to do things like take breaks and sleep. So what if we told you we could do it in half the time? That's the Embark self-driving truck and it's equipped with deep learning software that allows it to see the world around it. Basically, it's a big robot. Let's take a closer look. Oh, hey, Jamie. Alex is the CEO of Embark. Hey, Alex. You making a video about self-driving trucks? I think so. <laughs> All right, you want to take this one for a spin? Let's go. The visualizer up here on the, the back of the seats in front of you so oh, you yeah. can see what's going on. Our safety driver up front is going to hit the enable button. You can see enable there on the screen. Ready to enable. Starting trip. And from here on out, all the way up back, the computer is going to be driving the truck. So Alex, what's your background? I, uh, I've been building robots my whole life. Started when I was 11. Uh, I like to think of these as the world's biggest robots. And one of the things I learned is about how important scoping the problem is. And I think that really informs what we're doing at Embark, where we decided to build the simplest possible vehicle that can make a difference for real people. So here we are, heading onto the highway. Entering highway mode. Uh, first, you'll notice how quickly and calmly it's able to slip in behind this vehicle here. Uh, you start to see some of the objects showing up on the screen. Now we're trying to make a lane change. It's interesting because there's a not a really big gap for us, so we're trying to slide in between this truck here up ahead and the guy behind us. Gap approved. Now we're backing off to give a little bit of following distance. So here's our first big interchange. Right lane change. So you'll get to see uh, here, it really needs to be pretty assertive and confident as it makes these maneuvers. Right. It's kind of fun seeing the objects in the visualizer and then seeing them pop into real life. So next up, we have the clover leap. It's a fun little part of the route where we have to make a couple of pretty quick lane changes. Uh, and the truck really has to be able to see up over a hill, has to have really good control coming around the curve. And one of the key things that allows us to be able to handle this correctly is that vision map fusion system that allows us to actually adjust the rough map you have coming in to match exactly what the sensors are seeing in real time. And so if the truck is leaned over a little bit, we're actually tweaking the map to make sure that it matches the orientation of the truck. I only have two pods. That's right, yeah, it, it's watching 360 all the time, right? The sensors are up high, and so it can actually see over, and then they're also out to the sides, and so it can see with the LiDAR and with the cameras. So we just finished uh, a pretty boring section of route, just long, straight driving, and that's really, I think, one of the areas that the truck shines, because we're able to have a level of focus that's the same on hour 30 as it is on hour one. And that's one of the things that lets us do fast cross-country runs. So Alex, I think we've got a tunnel coming up. Is there anything special that the truck has to be aware of and deal with in tunnels? Yeah, tunnels are actually a really interesting and challenging part because they force your sensor fusion to be able to work without some of the sensors. Your GPS doesn't work with 30 feet of concrete above you, and your radars get all these weird reflections off the tunnel. And so this really is pushing the camera and the LiDAR to take on the lion's share of the work. And the fusion system is realizing how to balance that between the different sensors. And this is also a great example where the camera quality matters a lot. Getting high dynamic range cameras that can work outdoors and also capture at the quality required for machine vision. As we come out here into the brightness, going from dark to bright is actually requires a very high quality camera. What would you say is your timeline of these things out on the road simply without a human driver? We think that the first driver out demonstrations will be in 2023. It's a no-brainer that the technology exists now to do it. 
Uh, the infrastructure will support it. The benefits are obvious that you're going to be able to get materials where they need to go quicker, more reliably. I, I feel in this truck doing what you're having it do, though, I can trust it. So here we are transitioning off the highway and now back onto some of these smaller streets to make it out to that final drop point. So that was that. That was great. I think the overarching thing was safety and confidence. It, it just seemed really solid. You know, it was aware of everything that was going on around it. It was cautious. It was, it was seeing a lot more than I was seeing. And uh, so it felt like it was safer than being with a, you know, a, a human driver to me. Awesome, glad you liked it. Thanks for taking a ride. Thanks for having me. Dave, where'd all the strawberries end up? I think they're over here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs>